Let's move to question number 39 and which is from electrostatic. A parallel plate capacitor is made of two circular plates separated by this much distance with a dielectric of dielectric constant 2.2. When electric field in dielectric is this much, we got to find charge density of positive plate and very close to, that's a calculation, ease. Now, it's a parallel plate capacitor and we neglect fringing during all this calculation. So, the electric field inside would be 1 by K times sigma by epsilon naught. And you could see that electric field is given there. Epsilon naught value we know 8.8, .8, 10 minus 12 and K is also given the dielectric constant. On calculation, the charge density would come very close to option number B. This was about question number 39. We'll move to question number 40. Okay, let's go to question number 40 now. And it's from an RL circuit. In the circuit shown here, the point C is kept connected to A till the current becomes constant. Quite obviously, that would be an RL charging circuit. Afterward, suddenly C is connected to B at T equals to 0. Then, now it becomes an RL discharging circuit. And the question says, ratio of voltage across resistance and inductor at T equals to L by R will be equal to. Once the switch is shifted to position B, now it becomes an RL discharging circuit and the polarity of potential would be plus minus and since it is a decreasing current, therefore in inductor that would be minus plus. Now if I use KVL here, I will be getting minus of VR, if I go clockwise, plus of VL is equal to 0. And you would see that this situation now comes out to be minus of Vr equals to minus of Vl. And you would see that the minus and minus gets cancelled here. So Vr would be equals to Vl. But the ratio of potential across the resistor and inductor would be 1 when it comes in terms of magnitude. And the question here gives both the option 1 as well as minus 1. In our opinion, we would more be gravitating towards minus 1. Considering the fact that when you write KVL across the loop or KVL across the mesh, then once you get a positive voltage, another you get a negative voltage. And finally, the ratio would be minus 1. Else, when it comes for magnitude, quite obviously, the magnitude would be 1. Okay, question number 41. Again from optics, but this time wave optics and polarization. Two beams A and B of plane polarized light with mutually perpendicular planes of polarization are seen through a polaroid. From the position when beam A has maximum intensity, so quite obviously A and B have perpendicular planes. So if this is plane of polarization of A, this is plane of polarization of B. And it says from the position when beam A has maximum intensity, that means the polarizer is in this way. At that situation when A has maximum intensity, B would be having zero intensity. A rotation of polaroid through 30 degree. So if my finger is the plane of polaroid, it is parallel to A initially, perpendicular to B. It rotates through 30 degree. Makes the two beams, now the transmitted beams, appear equally bright. So for the first situation you get the transmitted beam through the polaroid by using law of malice is Ia cos square 30 and the transmitted beam of B would be Ib 
cos square 60 and the question says that these two intensities are equal. So quite obviously Ia by Ib would lead to 1 by 3 that's option number A. All right, let's go for question number 42 and this is from properties of bulk matter again. There is a circular tube in vertical plane, two immiscible liquids of densities D1 and D2. So the lower one, the shaded one is D1 and this is D2 are filled in the tube. Each liquid subtends 90 degree angle at the center. So this is one fourth of circumference. This is one fourth of circumference. Radius joining their interface, this is the radius joining their interface, makes an angle alpha with vertical and based on the value of alpha we got to find d1 by d2 and here is the option. Since the whole system is at hydrostatic condition, it is all that we balance the pressure. I could go by varieties of technique, one technique let me follow, let me write the pressure at this point one from the LHS, other from the RHS and I am going to equate it. In the first situation, I want to write the pressure here. You could see if this angle is alpha, this angle would be pi by 2 minus of alpha. So the vertical height of this much part would be this one. So the pressure would be, assuming the pressure here to be 0, that would be D1 is the density into G into this height and quite obviously this height would be the total height minus of this. So that will be R minus R sin alpha because this would be R cos pi by 2 minus alpha very straightforward. So what have I written is pressure at this point starting from LHS. Now pressure at the same point starting from RHS here is 0, then I need the vertical height of this one, I can go with simple manipulation. This angle would be pi by 2 minus alpha and this angle would be alpha. So from here let me go down. So first is D2 G and I want this height, so quite obviously that would be R sin alpha plus additionally this height. And that's going to be R sin pi by 2 minus alpha, which would be R cos alpha. So plus D2 G R cos alpha plus I want this particular height. And that's very simple. That's R minus of R cos alpha would be this height. So that would be plus D1 G R minus of R cos alpha. So you could see that what we have done is we have written the pressure at this point starting from LHS and starting from RHS and we have equated them. Rest is a very easy trigonometric solution that will lead you to option number 4.